Welcome to Inspiration Rising. I'm your host, David Trotter, and we're here to inspire you to rise up in your life, love, and leadership. Today, I have the first of five episodes featuring the interviews from our very first Inspiration Rising live event, which took place in Orange County, California. Now, about 70 or so women and a few guys gathered for a night of inspiration and connection, and it was an incredible evening. My hope is that the recording of the interviews gives you just a taste into what it was like to be there in person. Now, our first interview of the evening was with Andrea Luna Reese. She's a professional ceramics artist whose work is sold in over 30 boutiques around the nation. Before her interview, I shared the Inspiration Rising Manifesto with the audience, and I've included that here so that you can experience that as well. I was talking really fast in the beginning of this event because we had so many interviews to get through, and I was really excited, so sorry about all my fast talking. Jeez. Before we jump into the interview, I want to invite you to our first live online workshop called Rise Up and Soar. During this one-hour online event, which you can watch from the comfort of your home, office, or car from anywhere in the world, I will share with you how to get unstuck, clarify your goals, and take your life to the next level. You can sign up for one of three time slots on September 18th or 19th, 2019 at insporising.com slash rise up. If you're feeling stuck in life, I want to help you get out of the rut and gain traction to move forward. The world needs what you have to offer. I truly believe that. I want to help you discover what you want and deserve in this life and how to strategically take action to get it. And I want to help you embrace your true identity and take responsibility for your life in order to cultivate the results that you truly desire. Now, many of the women I work with in our online coaching programs are tired of feeling defeated after a separation or divorce. Is that you? They feel lost with no sense of purpose when their kid goes to school. Is that you? They feel stuck in an unfulfilling job that just pays the bills or paralyzed by an empty nest or less than because of a recent health challenge. Or they feel like it's too late because of their age. Or they're just overwhelmed by whatever it is that they're facing. If that's you, I want to invite you to sign up for one of the three live online workshop times at insporising.com slash rise up. Your time is extremely valuable and so is mine. So I will ensure that you walk away with practical tools to help you rise up and soar. Plus, I want to make sure that you learn more about our eight-week online coaching experience called Launch Your Life. So sign up for the live online workshop. You can take it anywhere in the world at insporising.com slash rise up. Okay, let's join the wonderful guest at Inspiration Rising Live. Recently on our private Facebook group, the Inspiration Rising Insiders. Anybody in that group? Anybody? Okay, we got a few people. Good, good. Uh, it's on Facebook, Inspiration Rising Insiders. You go to it, and uh, it's a great, um, inspiring gathering. Inside of your swag bag, there is a copy of the Inspiration Rising Manifesto. Um, but I printed it out on the back. So if you want to pull out the back here, it's printed here. But I gave you a card. And if people go to our website, they can request a card that has the Inspiration Rising Manifesto. I literally sent them all over the world. Somebody posted today on Facebook. They, they've got it on their kitchen counter in Australia. They're like, I say this three times a day, David, because it's made an inference in my life. All right, so I'm going to read it first, and then we're going to read it together if you're open to that. All right? So I'm going to read it. It says, my life has been inspired from the moment of conception. I believe that, that your life was inspired from the moment that you were conceived by your biological mom and dad, right? You were an inspired creation. I am whole and complete just as I am. I don't have to do or be anything else to be loved. Anybody have a hard time embracing that? Okay, I'm the only one. All right. <laughs> Yes, you are whole and complete. You are loved just the way you are. This is my true identity. That is your identity right there, that you're whole and complete. You're loved just as you are. Embracing my inspiredness, I am discovering my unique way to bring inspiration to the world. 
My life story, wiring, and strengths are my superpowers, meaning that your story of your life, the ups, downs, twists, and turns, the way that you think about your life, the story that you tell about your life is your superpower if you allow it to be. Your wiring, the way that you are wired in terms of your personality, that is your superpower, not the negative parts. Forget trying to work on those negative parts. Like you try to you know, mellow those out, but the power of your wiring Like that is your superpower and your strengths. You've had strengths from the moment you were born. Your parents saw them. I see them in my kids. I'm like, wow, how did you get that? That was in you from the moment of conception. Those are your superpowers. And I'm learning to use them with others, not just alone, but with others and for the sake of others. I do a lot of stuff for the sake of others. Not to say that I, you know, my ego is not involved in there, that I'm doing things for the sake of myself, but I've done a lot of stuff for the sake of others because that's fun for me. Like there's a hit, there's an enjoyment. I'm doing this tonight for you. You feel that? Like I'm doing it for you and I'm doing it for them. All right. Uh, I have access to all the resources I need to live out my inspiration. All the resources you need. You're, you're, you have all the time you need, all the money you need, the relationships you need. You have it all right in front of you. And I will be strong and courageous in the face of any challenge. My inspiration is rising. Yeah. That's what we're all about with Inspiration Rising. Okay. Will you say it with me? Will you say it? Here we go. My life has been inspired from the moment of conception. I am whole and complete just as I am. I don't have to do or be anything else to be loved. This is my true identity. Embracing my inspiredness, I am discovering my unique way to bring inspiration to the world. My life story, wiring, and strengths are my superpowers, and I am learning to use them with others for the sake of others. I have access to all the resources I need to live out my inspiration, and I will be strong and courageous in the face of any challenge. My inspiration is rising. Oh, do you feel it? Do you feel that? Yeah. If your friends want one, they go to our website. I'll mail it to you uh, anywhere in the world. All right. Well, tonight I am introducing you to, if you don't already know, five powerful, inspiring, wise women. These interviews are rather short because I want to give you a taste of who they are. On your handout, you have access to their website, to their Instagram account, so that you can get connected to them. I want want you to just get a taste of what they're all about, and then you can follow up and connect with them tonight, afterwards, and even after that on their website. The first featured guest that we have tonight is, oh, she's a great friend. She's a professional ceramics artist, otherwise known as a ceramicist. Yes. <laughs> ceramicist. Her work is sold in over 30 boutiques around the United States, and she puts on over, she goes to over 30 shows in Southern California per year in order to sell her work. Uh, this is one of her pieces. This is one of her pieces. Isn't it an awesome? In your swag bag is a uh, rainbow that she made just for you. And uh, she's an awesome wife and mom. She loves punk rock. <laughs> and her favorite word is rad. rad. <laughs> yep. Tonight we get to talk to Andrea Luna Reese about self-care through daily creativity. So welcome, Andrea. Thank Give her a hand. You. Thank you. Okay, now, Andrea, when I think about self-care, I think about going to a spa, getting wrapped in seaweed, you know, having stuff like slathered all over me, yes. which I've never done before. <laughs> uh, but that's what I think about when I think about self-care. When you think about self-care, what comes to your mind? Yes, I agree. Those things can be a form of self-care, the getting a facial and stuff like that. But for me, it's, it's three things. It's, it's, a, it's a physical, uh, emotional and a mental thing for me. And, th- and through that is my creativity. And that's how I, I deal with that. I work with that. But there's creativity interwoven in there. So, and all three of those things, yes. But why, why for you, personally? Don't give us like the, you know, Glamour Magazine answer or Vogue uh-huh. or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, why is self-care and caring for yourself important to you? It's important to me because it has helped me work out so many 
um, past hurts and issues in my young adult life that I didn't realize I was carrying over until I was actually working on my BFA show. And through that, I realized so many of the pieces that I was creating at that time were dealing with childhood hurts and, and losses. And I had no idea until a year or two later, looking back in reflection and going, oh my gosh, I dealt with that and that, and I'm healed. I don't even feel that anymore. So, And that's when I realized how important it was for me to express myself. I have to paint or, or work in clay or do something creative, creativity-wise every day. So a couple days ago, you were dropping off rainbows yes. at my house. And we were in my office area, and you saw a baby head that was up <laughs> high on the wall. I did, yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, that's a baby head. That's creepy. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool, huh? Um, And you said you created a piece of art with a bunch of baby heads. Well, I did it in a... Well, I used the, the, I used the, the head as a form of my younger self. It was just a, a, a symbol, a symbolic imagery that I wanted to... It wasn't necessarily about a small child. It was more just about that inner child, that in, the, just the, the youth, I guess. So yes, it reminded me of that. It reminded me of a piece I did actually on the divorce of my, fam- of my parents so, and what that felt like at that time. Do you mind telling us about the piece and even how that like, was a form of caring for yourself? Yeah. It's a little rough because I think I, my, both my parents were at my BFA show and seeing the piece, and I think that really hit them, especially when I titled it Me Familia. So when they saw it, it was um, four of us, you know, in a, in a suitcase covered with tar and assembled up onto a wall. It's really hard to explain, but that, that's kind of what that piece was. But it was. It was about just the, like, the yuckiness of divorce and what that, even though I was a younger, older, a younger adult when it happened, it still, it still has effects. Yeah. Uh, as you go about your daily life, obviously mm-hmm. you're making product, yes. right? That's sold. Yes. Is that a part of your self care, creating that product, or do you are you creative separately from that as a form of caring for yourself? I think I think it's it's definitely a part of it. I would say I do have to make time for uh, just creating to create and not a production side of things because the production side of science is great and I love that my work fills so many people's homes and has traveled all across the United States and abroad and I'm super thankful and like that brings me so much joy that like oh my gosh someone chose that to put into their home like that is it's such an awesome compliment. And so I do love that aspect of my business, but there's times where it does, it is work, 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 and I do need a, a different type of release. And so I'll make things just to make with no agenda. Like give us an example of something you recently made. Take us through the process. You know what I mean? Like were you feeling a certain way? You, you were motivated to do it. You know what I mean? Take us through the whole process. So... I think when I when I feel I, there's just something that comes inside me that it's like a, a tension and I I don't know how else to explain that where I feel I have to work something out and it could be personal it could be business it could just be whatever my kid I have high schoolers whatever they're go, dealing with and trying to navigate that and for me getting out and whether it's starting to paint or listen to music or going on a walk or um, rolling out my clay to start a piece. It, there's just something that immediately just is just let go and I can just work through what I'm feeling. And thoughts come in and you're like, oh my gosh, there's the answer right there as I'm building a coil piece pot. You know, like it's, it's funny to me how that happens. But so there's different ways I kind of start to to work that out but that's usually how I just I just start immediately and it could be even by a sketch or a journal entry or something that sparks me like oh I want to make that I want to do that I get an idea I get a vision sometimes of like oh that's what that painting should be Mm -hmm. do uh, those paintings mean something different to you than you know what I mean other paintings that you do Yes, because, well, obviously, I think it's a little more personal, but I feel like it's always personal because I'm making it. Like, there's still, I'm carrying something into each piece that I'm creating. But, um, yeah, I think those where 
where I know it's intentional, like I'm intentionally working out this and it's coming through the, the clay or the painting, the imagery that I'm using. Yeah, there's always that connection to answer mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So if there are those of us who are here tonight that mm-hmm. are listening to you that maybe we don't necessarily think of ourselves as creative, mm-hmm. right? You, you meet those people. Yes. I'm not creative. Yes, right? all the time. say that all the time. Right? All the time. So uh, maybe we're more into self-care as thinking of uh, like a walk on the beach, mm-hmm. a walk in the nature park, um, going to get a mani-pedi, a massage, you know, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. just sitting down, yoga maybe it's mm-hmm. even. Absolutely. Um, meditation, meditation, prayer, whatever that looks like, yeah. If, uh, if we wanted to try to integrate creativity into our lives, how would you give us some like ideas or steps? Because I, I oftentimes feel like I don't even know what I'm doing. This looks, this looks stupid. This is a waste of time. I'm a perfectionist. So now it's like, oh, this is jacked oh, up. And yeah, I throw, yeah. you know, you got to let all that go. Yes. Yeah. And, and like go into it with just, I, I think play is so important. And I think we forget about play a lot in our lives and how we approach things. And if you can just f- not have an agenda, like you're not going to take a painting class and be Picasso in like a day, you know, like, but just go have fun and experiment with something that you've never worked with before. And I think out of that play comes so much healing and it, and and it comes and it opens up so many different things for you to view something differently. Like you can look at a problem differently when you're in those moments. So if it's taking a class, maybe you love to cook, go take a cooking class, but like, or maybe it's like, well, I already know how to cook. Well then go try a class on kombucha or something, you know, just like get out of your element and do something that you're interested in, because you don't want to go do something that you have, don't have an interest in at whatsoever, because that's not going to get you anything, you know, but try to find something that like, oh, I want to, I saw this thing on photography, I'm going to take this class, or I'm going to um, start a book club, because I love to read books, like whatever that looks like, I think those are all creative things, and I think journaling is super creative, my, my aunt, when I was 16 years old, gave me my first journal, and it literally, I think, changed my life, I had no idea wow. that I even had thoughts and feelings that I could share and write about. And of course, I cringe when I look back now at what my 16 year old self was writing. But he's so hot. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah. Or like, you know, we went and saw these bands play and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you know, it's really funny when, but I realized like what a tool that was for me in starting my creative process. So I, I think it's just important to just start somewhere. But I think there's classes you can take. I think even gathering with your girlfriends and just making time for that is huge. You know, how about like the sip and paints? Well, ah! I mean, yeah, I don't absolutely whatever works, whatever works. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what about for us uh, perfectionists in the room? That you know, it just feels like it almost feels like work to me to try to, to try create, to you know, something like, or I'm going to mess it up, or I'm not going to do it right. How do you help us loosen up a bit? Hmm. Is it the sipping? That's the sipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, gosh, I don't know. That's a really that's a really good question. I don't know if I have the right answer for that, but I think I think I would just say, you know, you just just have fun. Just allow yourself to just like let your guard down for a second and like yeah, just play, just have fun. Let's go back to your business for a second. Sure. I don't know if you guys have seen I did a Insta- or a Facebook live um, and showed the inside of Andrea's studio. Uh, so if you have a dream of starting something and you think you've got to have all this stuff, take us back to when you started your business and tell them where do you work right now? Like, and, and how much are you producing out of this space? <laughs> So I, my studio, I call it my studio. It is literally my garage. It is a one size of a one car garage that I also happen to share with a washer and dryer, surfboards, skateboards, bikes, everything is in that garage, part of that space. But in there, I have managed to fit all my tables, all my molds, my slab roller, my wheel, like everything is in there and I, and I make it work. And I've always, I've, you know, the luxury of being in school is you have so much at your at your hands, like there, I have tw- had 20 kilns to choose from. Now all of a sudden I'm out of school and I'm like, I don't have a kiln, I don't have a workspace, I don't have this, I don't have that, what do I do to get myself to this spot? So you just, you slowly, you build up and you just slowly make things happen. And now, 
how I said 30 uh, boutiques yes. and shows like how far is your work going out there uh, I think I'll, I have collectors that have collected my paintings and my pottery all the way to Japan and Australia and I have stores in Puerto Rico and across the United States so and the Trotter yeah. family and the Trotter family yes we have pieces. You do have pieces. Yeah. We have uh, in our kitchen on top of some blue lockers that I scavenged out of an old Coco's restaurant parking lot, uh, there are four animals that you made. What are they? A fox? A fox, a rabbit? No, sure. A squirrel. Fox, squirrel, owl. I wish you'd start making those again. Really? Oh, they're amazing. Why don't you make them? Um, I think... I reach a point with something and it's just time to let it go and it's done and it's reached its course and sort of served its purpose in a way and yeah. And, and it increases the value of my... Absolutely, because now there's not very many of those around. Yeah, yeah. Mine have no chips. <laughs> They're perfect. Okay, awesome. so tonight, if someone is sitting here who feels stuck, okay... Anybody here, you don't have to raise your hand, but if you feel stuck, right, in some area of your life, it doesn't have to be your whole life. Some people do feel that way. I've been that way. Oh, man, I've been stuck. Uh, But you might feel stuck in your uh, physical health. You might feel stuck in a relationship. You might feel stuck in trying to figure out your passion or your career. You might feel stuck in your uh, relationship with a significant other or wanting a significant other or wanting to get rid of your significant other, right? Like you, you... You might be stuck, right, somehow. Have you ever been stuck? Yes. Okay. I know some areas where you've been stuck. Yes. But I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to say, but. um, What would you say to someone tonight who feels stuck? What hope would you give them? What encouragement would you provide to them? Uh, Just to have grace for themselves, like just have grace for yourself because you're, and you're not alone. You're not alone in feeling what you're feeling. Um, And by having grace for yourself, I mean, just like go easy. Just give yourself a break. Like it, it's hard. It's hard juggling lots. It's hard juggling motherhood and working and, and whatever that looks like, whatever your life is, it's, it's hard. And so um, just have grace, but find Find a class or a course or friends that you can reach out to and that can help cheer you on in, in whatever it is an area that you're stuck, you know? I don't know. It, it looks, it depends. It, it's, it's so different for so many people. So, yeah. <laughs> Andrea Luna Reese. Yeah. May your business... Go to all the places that you want it to go. Thank you. May it go beyond your hopes and dreams. Oh, Dave, you're going to make me cry. May you find your way into West Elm. (laughs) And maybe even Target. Anthropology. Anthropology, right? Thank you. May it be so. Thank you. Will you guys give her a hand? You're so amazing, David. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Andrea Luna Reese. I want to encourage you to check out her pottery. You can do it at her website, which is lunareese.com. You can see that URL as well as all of her social media accounts in our show notes just by swiping up on your phone. Or you can find the show notes on our website at insporising.com. Also, be sure to sign up for the live online workshop, Rise Up and Soar, three times to choose from on September 18th and 19th, where you can watch it from your home, office, or car, anywhere in the world. Sign up at insporising.com slash rise up. I'll be releasing the next four conversations over the next week. Don't miss a single one. You can subscribe to the podcast at insporising.com slash subscribe. Until next time, have a wonderful week.